Let's take a look at how to color a protein molecular surface by electrostatic potential. So here's the kind of coloring we're going to get. Red is negative, uh, negative potential. Blue is positive to potential. And I'm going to quit this Chimera X and we're going to start uh, from the beginning to show how to do the coloring. So the protein we're going to look at, it's called CRM1. It's a nuclear export factor. It's a PDB I code is 6TVO, so I'll say open 6TVO. And I'm going to show a molecular surface. I'll go up to the toolbar under molecule display, show surface. So the blue part here is the, C, the nuclear export factor, CRM1. The pink is another protein that's important for doing the exporting. It's called RNA, or, or sorry, RAN GTPase. Um, I'm interested in the electrostatics on the, the blue part here. So I'm going to delete uh, the, the RAN GTPase. That's chain B. And so I can delete it by a command. I can say delete slash B. So let me th let's take a look now at three ways to do the, the kind this electrostatic coloring. The first is the simplest. We're going to just color negative charged residues red, positive charged residues blue. So first I'm going to color uh, the whole surface uh, white. Actually I think I'll choose light gray, not quite as harsh. Um, and then I'm going to type a command say color the positive residues lysine and arginine uh, blue and color the negative residues those would be at neutral pH would be glutamic acid and aspartic acid we'll color those red all right so this is coloring by charge charge is different from electrostatic potential the potential is a, a measure of energy how much energy it takes to move a charge nearby um, but this is directly visualizing the charge and it will give it gives a similar appearance uh, One way to make this look a little bit nicer a little more three-dimensional if I go back to the home toolbar This lighting this soft lighting will cast shadows and just gives a more three-dimensional appearance All right, so first way or second way now to do the coloring that really does electrostatic potential um, Can be done in chimera X. I go to the molecule display toolbar and under coloring it says electrostatic this computes charges uh, for all of the residues uh, the charges are distributed on different atoms of the, the different residues it's using amber default charges and it uses a 1 over r type of potential uh, it also it has a distance dependent dielectric to try to count account a little bit for the polarizability of um, the protein and the solvent so here's the coloring we get from that. Um, the, this protein that uh, escorts other proteins out of the, nucle or the nucleus of the cell into the cytoplasm, for instance, proteins that help uh, regulate gene expression, um, it, uh, an important part of it is this blue patch that I've placed at the top here, this positive patch. Once it's released the protein that it's escorted outside of the nuclear pore um, it doesn't want to pick that protein back up and end up bringing it back into the pore and this blue patch this positive patch is important for stabilizing the conformation outside after it's released so that it doesn't bring it back into the the nucleus of the cell all right um, this columbic calculation is a little simplistic uh, in handling the polarizability and uh, a fancier, um, more physically correct way is uh, done by a program called APBS, Adaptive Poisson Boltzmann Solver. Chimera X doesn't have this built into it right now, so I used a web server to run APBS. Let me show you that server. Um, it's here, server.poissonboltzmann.org, and there are two parts of it. First, it computes the charges. That's a program called PDB to PQR. It takes the atomic structure and it produces this PQR file, which is the atomic structure with charges added in a column of the PDB file. Uh, once you run that, uh, you, it will, you can then run the APBS program to compute the electrostatics. It took about four minutes for this protein. Let me show you the result. So 
um, it produced a potential file and let's load that file so I'll go to open and uh, let me choose that file it's here it, the suffix is dot DX so it's pet pot potential dot DX and there's some serial number from the server before that I'm just going to open it this is a three-dimensional grid of the electrostatic potential values that were computed and we're going to use those to color the molecular surface so here uh, when it's first open, Chimera X is displaying those potential values as, uh, as a contour surface. And it's at two threshold levels. Um, it's colored them just different shades of white, but I could, for instance, color them the negative one. And our typical coloring would be red, and the positive one would be colored blue. Okay, so this is the spatial distribution of the potential. But we want to color it onto the surface. So how do we do that? Well, first thing to notice is the potential doesn't align with the um, atomic model. And why is that? Well, when I ran this atomic model, the APBS server failed because there were uh, XYZ atom coordinates that were beyond 100 angstroms. And it had a problem parsing the PDB file. So I tried to center this atomic model by shifting it 50 angstroms in Z so that none of the coordinates exceeded 100 angstroms. I wrote out that new file, and that's what I ran uh, the web server, the APBS server on, so that I could get it to work. So let's open that uh, shifted file. I've made a, a little web page that describes how did I write out that shifted file. So you'll see in the description to this video a link to that web page if you're curious about those details. Um, so I'll open that PDB file. I'm going to hide the original one and um, okay so there's the PDB file let's show its surface go to the molecule display toolbar say surface show and how do I color um, this using the potential well there's a tool it's under tools volume data surface color this was added in March of 2021 just a month ago and so uh, if you have an older Chimera X like 1.1 it won't have that so you need to get a newer one. Um, and it brought this panel up, surface color panel. And I'll say color the surface uh, of my protein. Yeah, by electrostatic potential and using the DX map. And I have to give it some electrostatic potential values. Typically, these are in units of KT. That's energy per electron. Uh, typical range of values is 10. And I'll make white 0. And I'll make uh, blue plus 10 and press color. And here's the coloring we get from this. So this looks a little bit different. It's much redder. A uh, much larger part of the surface is red. Why is that? Um, if we count the uh, arginines and lysines, the positive charges and the negative charge residues, um, they're a lot more negative than positive, 19 uh, electron charges, more negative residues, 19 more negative residues than there are positive residues. So overall, this is um, pretty highly negatively charged, and that's why it appears red. If we, if we had it included some counter ions, normally um, in the cell, there would be ions that neutralize those charges. Um, so, uh, but this calculation didn't use such ions, and that's why it's appearing very red. The Colombic calculation um, didn't appear quite so red because it, it used a distance fall off um, that was is more rapid, but also less accurate. Um, so how do I correct this? Well, I can change the coloring. So I can change white, for instance, to be minus three. Why do I choose minus three? Um, if we look at the log, it says here what the uh, mean value of the potential on this surface is. It says the mean value is negative three. And so I'm adjusting white to be the mean value of the electrostatic potential. And I'm also going to reduce blue from 10 to five. This is just from experimenting to get a little bit better contrast on the colors. So here is the APBS coloring with this uh, slightly changed color range, which gives a better balance between the positive lets me see more of the positive and negative patches. All right, uh, I think that's it. Uh, thank you for listening.